Hello, my name is Igor Cadota, and I'm a postdoctoral research scientist at Columbia University. In this presentation, I'm going to discuss our paper, Aging Wireless Bandits, the Great Analysis and Order Optimal Learning Algorithm, which is joint work with Arai and Aiton. And in fact, Arai is the first author of this paper, so if you find the results interesting, he's the one that should get credit for them. This is the outline of our presentation. We're going to start with the motivation and with the description of the system model. Then we're going to define learning algorithm, and we're going to define age of information regret. And then we're going to use those two definitions to analyze the regret of traditional learning algorithms and to come up with our own order optimal learning algorithm. Then we're going to use simulations to compare the performance of those two classes of learning algorithms. Let's start with the motivation and with the system model. Time-sensitive applications, they are very important and they're also everywhere. So here we have two important classes of time-sensitive applications, automated fulfillment warehouses, and you can find those at Amazon and Alibaba intelligence transportation systems. So here we have a picture of self-driving cars, sharing time-sensitive information using vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication. And here you have collaborative multi-agent systems. So for instance, a swarm of drones performing a search and rescue mission. In each and every one of those applications, you have agents ge generating time-sensitive information and sending that information using wireless channels. So you can think of those applications using this type of a model with multiple sources generating time-sensitive information, namely packets, and storing those packets in queues. And then those multiple sources, they're going to compete for their shared and unreliable wireless channels, which often have unknown reliabilities, in order to transmit those packets to the destination. And the destination is keeping track of the information from all sources. And in time-sensitive applications, in particular, an important goal is to uh, optimize information freshness in the network. And we're going to define what information freshness is. However, before that, I would just like to emphasize that this is an interesting model for time-sensitive applications, and that's the model that we have in our paper. However, for the sake of simplicity, in this presentation, we're going to consider the model with a single source. So we're going to have a single source that's going to select one of those channels to transmit its packet to the destination. And the great thing about the simple model is that it keeps all the core ideas from the paper. But of course, that if you're interested in the multi-source model, I would refer you to the paper. So let's discuss the, mod the model a little bit further. So we're going to assume that time is slotted and the slot index is given by T, which goes from one to capital T, where T is the time horizon. Moreover, at the beginning of each slot T, the source is going to generate a new fresh packet with probability lambda. And with probability one minus lambda, the source will not generate a packet. We assume that lambda, this packet generation rate, is constant over time. So here we have that at times dot t, the source generated a new packet. However, it already had an older packet in its queue. And since the goal is to optimize information freshness, if you look at the literature, you're going to see that the optimal strategy here is to just get rid of this older packet. So you just discard this older packet and keep only the fresher one. So the source is going to keep only the most recently generated packet in its transmission queue. And older packets are going to be discarded as soon as a fresh packet is generated. So this is how sources generate and store packets in its queue. Now let's talk a little bit more about packet transmission. So in each slot T, the learning algorithm is going to select one of those N source, one of those N channels, and the source is going to transmit a packet using this channel. And we assume that different wireless channels have different reliabilities. So this is the reliability of channel one, this is the reliability of channel N. And those uh, values of mu, they are just the probabilities of the, that particular channel being on. We're going to see what this means in the next slides. However, I just wanted to emphasize that this channel reliability, this probability mu, is assumed to be constant over time and unknown by the learning algorithm. So the learning algorithm is going to select the channels without knowing the reliability of them. So, so the learning algorithm is going to have to learn those reliabilities through observations of outcomes of previous transmissions, right? Okay. Now, if the selected channel, in this case, channel one, is off, then this transmission is going to fail in this slot. And the transmission queue is going to keep this packet because it might want to transmit this packet again in the next time slot. And the information at the destination in the next slot is going to become one slot older. So I did not talk about age information yet. I, I'm going to define this formally in two slides. However, this is easy to see, right? So if at time slot t, the information at the destination is six slots old, then if this transmission here failed, this means that the destination, the information at the destination remains the same. And in the next slot, this information is going to be one slot older. That's why the age information is increased by one slot. 
In contrast, if channel one is on, then this transmission here is successful. The transmission queue becomes empty because this packet was successfully transmitted and the information at the destination becomes fresher. Instead of increasing, the information will be reduced because the destination just received fresh information. Now let's formally define the evolution of the aid information metric. So the aid information captures how fresh is the information from the perspective of the destination, right? So here, the aid information at time t plus one equals the delay of the packet if this packet was successfully transmitted in slot t. Otherwise, if there's no packet successfully transmitted in slot t, then in the next slot, the aid of information is gonna be increased by one slot. So if the transmission in this slot fails, then the aid information increases by one. If the transmission in this slot here is successful, then the aid information is updated in the next slot to the packet delay. And since in this slot here, the packet was generated three slots ago, so the, the delay here is three, this means that the aid information is gonna be updated to three slots. Otherwise, if this packet here was generated two slots ago, then the age information is gonna be updated to two slots. And even better, if this packet was just generated and then transmitted, then uh, the age information is gonna be updated to one slot. Uh, so this is how the age information evolves over time. And of course, that if in this time slot here, there is a failed transmission, then the age information is gonna increase again and so on. So in the next time slot, the process repeats. Basically, at the beginning of time slot t plus one, the source is gonna generate a new packet with probability lambda or not generate a packet with probability one minus lambda. And then the learning algorithm is gonna select one of the end channels. And then the source is gonna transmit its packet using the selected channel. And if the channel is on, then the packet is delivered and aid information is reduced, All right? So the process re basically repeats. One thing that I did not mention is that if by chance the transmission queue is empty, there's no packet to be transmitted in slot t plus one, then a dummy packet can be transmitted for the purpose of probing the channels. Remember that the learning algorithm has to learn the reliabilities, right? So the learning algorithm can choose to transmit a dummy packet just to see if that channel was on or off. And naturally the dummy packet is not gonna improve the information at the destination because it doesn't contain any particular information about the time sensitive application. So the dummy packet is used to see if the, the channel was on or off. However, it does not impact the aid of information. Okay, now let's discuss the learning algorithms and let's define the aid of information regret. So the goal of the learning algorithm pi is to select channels over time such that it's minimizing the expected total aid of information. And the expected total aid of information is given by this. So this is the sum of aid of information over time. So the sum of this, those dots, and I'm taking the expectation here where the expectation is with respect to the randomness in the channel states on and off. This is just the state of the channels. And it's um, with respect with the packet generation rates, uh, packet generation process, which is just a brand process. And also with respect to the learning algorithm, which can be a randomized algorithm. Now the optimal ideal learning algorithm by star is the one that selects in each and every slot t the best channel. So this ideal algorithm pi star knows uh, the identity of the best channel in advance and selects that channel in every single time slot t. And of course, that if you look at this model, it's obvious that if I always select the best channel, then my aid information is gonna be the lowest as possible. So that, that's gonna be the optimal learning algorithm pi star. Now, the aid information regrets associated with the suboptimal learning algorithm pi is gonna be given by the uh, total aid information of the suboptimal algorithm minus the total aid information of the optimal algorithm. And notice that minimizing uh, the total aid information is equivalent to minimizing the regrets. So the learning algorithm that minimizes the total aid information is going to be the same learning algorithm that minimizes the aid of information regrets. Now here is a sample evolution of aid of information. So here I have the aid of information over time and the blue arrows are the times in which packets are generated at the source. And the orange arrows are the times in which the packet is successfully transmitted to the destination. And remember that here, uh, the, the orange arrows are associated with the optimal algorithm pi star and the optimal algorithm pi star is the one that selects the best channel in every slot t. So those times are the times in which the optimal channel was on and there was a packet to be transmitted. And in those cases, the aid information is reduced of course, because it just received a fresh packet. And here again, it's reduced because it just received a fresher packet and so on. Now I'm gonna overlay the age of information evolution associated with the suboptimal learning algorithm pi, which is gonna select channels aiming to minimize the age information regrets. Remember that the learning algorithm pi does not know the identity of the optimal channel. So here I have the age information evolution associated with the suboptimal learning algorithm pi. And here we can see that there are some discrepancies. 
those discrepancies, I call them the instantaneous regrets. So here we have the instantaneous regret of not having transmitted a packet using the optimal channel in this time slot here. And you can see that the instantaneous regret, they can have different amplitudes. And those amplitudes, they basically depend on the history of packet generation and packet deliveries. Moreover, the instantaneous regrets, they, they can have a duration which is more than one slot, and they can also be accumulated. So here we have two missed opportunities of transmitting with the optimal channel. And here you can see that the instantaneous regret accumulated from five to seven. And the eight information regret is gonna just be the sum of instantaneous regrets. So if you sum those green values here, we can get an eight information regret of 25 slots in this plot. What I would like to point out now is that the instantaneous regret and the age information regret, both of them, they depend on the state of the channels, which is just IID, but they also depend on the history of previous packet deliveries and generations. This makes this regret structure intricate and challenging. And this means that there is, and this has a significant impact on the analysis of the regrets and also on the development of new learning algorithms, as we're gonna discuss in the next few slides. So now we're gonna analyze the regret of traditional learning algorithms, and then we're gonna develop our own order optimal learning algorithm. So now we're gonna look into traditional algorithms that are used to solve the stochastic multi-arm banded problem. And one of those algorithms is the epsilon greedy algorithm, which I'm gonna uh, display here, and I'm gonna explain how it works just so, so that we know how it would operate in our network model. So the epsilon greedy algorithm works like this. In each slot T, it's gonna estimate the reliability of those n channels and it's going to do the estimation using this very simple ratio of the total number of successful transmissions divided by the total number of transmission attempts for the particular channel right so, so it's going to compute this estimation for one uh, this estimate of the channel reliabilities for those n channels and then it's going to guess which using those estimates it's going to guess which one is the best channel and with probability one minus epsilon the epsilon greedy policy is going to select the, the best the assumed best channel and with or with probability epsilon is going to select a channel at random and this is made such that it can learn something new about a different channel and this is made so that it can exploit the best channel so far so here we have an exploration exploitation trade-off which is balanced by carefully tuning this um, rate uh, this probability epsilon t which can also be changed over time if you're interested in, in how to do this uh, tuning i would encourage you to take a look at this paper but in, in our paper, what we do is that we analyze the uh, age of information regret associated with those traditional learning algorithms, right? So we consider the class uh, pi star of learning algorithms that decide which channel to select using only the information about the outcomes of previous transmission attempts. So I, I do not use all the information. In those class of learning algorithms, I just use information about those outcomes and I can use those, those information to estimate the channel reliabilities such as what we just did with the epsilon greedy algorithm, right? So in this class of algorithms, we actually have not only the epsilon greedy, but also UCB, Thompson sampling, and others. And then we prove this proposition. For any given network configuration with packet generation rate lambda and this vector of channel reliabilities, the age of information regret of any learning algorithm in this class is chaos with the expected number of suboptimal channel choices. So the age of information regret is going to scale with the expected number of suboptimal channel choices of the particular learning algorithm pi, which falls in this class, prior to the end of the time horizon. So we, we prove this proposition. And from the analysis of those papers, which basically analyze those um, three algorithms here, we can plug in the expected number of suboptimal channel choices here to obtain that uh, the age of information regret associated with those three um, traditional learning algorithms grows or scales with log t, with log of the time horizon, right? So basically they start, uh, the eight information regret starts uh, growing faster and then it tapers off, but it never becomes bounded, right? It always increases over time. And uh, this result here is actually a, a similar result was obtained in, in this paper for the special case of a source that is always generating packets. So it's generating packets at every given time slot t. So this is the deterministic packet generation. In our paper, we generalize this result for stochastic arrivals and also for multiple sources. So this is one of our contributions. And the second contribution is our uh, new algorithm. So basically the epsilon greedy UCB at Thompson sampling, they are order optimal for the stochastic multi arm banded problem. So basically what this means is that they are very good at learning which of those channels is the optimal channel. And if we think about the optimal learning algorithm, that's basically what the optimal learning algorithm does, right? The optimal learning algorithm that we saw before 
uh, it selects the best channel M star in each and every time slot T. So if we have those, those learning algorithms, which basically um, are, are designed to find which one is the best channel in a very efficient way, maybe this is, is as good as an algorithm can get. So a good question would be, is there any other learning algorithm that, that can do better than log T? And the answer of course is yes. And the key insight is that the learning algorithm can leverage times in which the system is empty to transmit dummy packets and learn the, the statistics of those channels without having any cost in terms of information regret. So the dummy packets are basically free lunches, right? So imagine here that the source, the, the source does not have a data packet to transmit. So then I can just transmit the data packets and, and I can learn something about the channels without incurring any cost in terms of age information. Because the dummy packet, even if the dummy packet is successfully transmitted, the age information is gonna, not going to be reduced anyway. So I might as well learn something about the channels. So this is how our ordered optimal learning algorithm works. In each and every slot T, if the system is empty, the ordered optimal learning algorithm is going to select a channel at random, and then it's going to update its, its estimates based on the outcome of this transmission. Otherwise, if the system is not empty and there is a data packet to be transmitted, then I, the order optimal learning algorithm is going to select the best assumed channel. And it will not update its estimate of the channel reliabilities. And this is basically because of the proof that I'm going to show in the next, paper, in the next slide. So here's a description of the order optimal learning algorithm. And this is our theorem. For any given network configuration, the age information regret of the order optimal learning algorithm is going to be bounded. So this is our age of information regrets. And to the best of our knowledge, this is the first learning algorithm with bounded age of information regrets. And the proof is uh, as follows. We're going to use Hofting's inequality to bound the probability of selecting a suboptimal channel during a non-empty period. Then we're going to use discrete phase type distributions to bound the con contributions of those uh, suboptimal choices on the age information regrets. And then we're going to use those two bounds to upper bound the age information regrets. And this is how we get our theorem. So now we're going to use some simulation results. Uh, so we're going to consider a network with one source generating packets with either low rate or high rate. And then we're going to consider five wireless channels with reliability, reliability is given by this. So 0 0.4, 4, 5, 5, 5, 5, and 0 0.6. And as, as you can see, they are kind of clumped together such that they are hard to learn. It's going to be harder to, hard to differentiate between 0 0.55 and 0 0.6. And the time horizon that we consider is going to be 5 to the 10 to the fifth slots. And we're going, to, we're going to compare the, the following uh, learning algorithms in terms of the age information regrets. Epsilon greedy, upper confidence bound, so UCB, Thompson sampling, the optimal or the order optimal learning algorithm, and also a hybrid algorithm that basically uses Thompson, Thompson sampling for a fixed period in the beginning, and then it just uses the optimal policy in the remaining slots. And this uh, hybrid policy is very good, as, as you will see, for uh, networks with high packet generation rates. And each data point is going to be an average over the result of 200 simulations. So here we have our results for low packet generation rates and high packet generation rates. So here we have the optimal policy, the uh, hybrid policy, Thompson sampling, Epsilon greedy, and UCD. And as you can see here, um, the only policies that are actually bounded, they have bounded in virtual regret are hybrid and optimal. And this is also true for uh, high packet generation rates and all the other policies, including Thomson sampling, they, uh, they have a low uh, rate of increase. However, they, they never become bounded, right? As uh, we expected from the theoretical results. So this is a summary of the results in this presentation. The main result is that our traditional learning algorithms that achieve uh, age information regrets, which is uh, log T and, and we uh, extended the, the results uh, from the case of deterministic arrivals and one source to the case of stochastic arrivals and multiple sources. And the second result is that our order optimal learning algorithm is the first one to have an age information regret, which is bounded. And just again, as a, a reminder, uh, we show similar results in the paper, but for the case of multiple sources in which the learning algorithm does not only select channels, but it also selects sources. So this is a very, uh, it's a much more challenging uh, uh, proof. And as you can see, the age information regret is not only the sum, the difference of age information of one source, but it's the sum, the difference of the sum of age information of multiple sources, right? So this is a much more challenging case. And if you're interested in the multi-source case, I would um, encourage you to take a look at our paper. So thank you very much for your time and attention.